If you've always hoped to one day be able to draw from your imagination, but you're unsure how your current drawing efforts are ever going to get you there, then this video is perfect for you. In it, I will demonstrate and explain a powerful exercise to integrate into your practice routine, which focuses on your ability to see and retain shapes clearly. So next time when you go to draw, those shapes will be in your memory bank. If you're looking forward to this lesson, be so kind and give it a thumbs up so other artists like you can find it in the algorithm as well. My name is Carolyn and I'm a practicing artist and instructor and I help other artists who are tired of their technical and creative limitations finally master drawing once and for all so they can enjoy the freedom that comes with meaningfully expressing themselves. So if that sounds like you, hit that subscribe button so we can stay connected. And if you're really serious about moving on from your limitations and you're ready to take another step, I linked a free masterclass in the description below which will outline to you how to get to a place where you absolutely love your drawings from step A to Z. But for now, let's get into this lesson. So what we tend to do when we want to improve our skill set is that we go on autopilot and just draw a bunch, be it from photographs or from the live model and we hope that this will lead us to the goal of being able to draw from our imaginations but if you only do that it's going to take you a pretty long time so if your goal is to be able to draw out of your head you'll have to use some targeted exercises that will get you there so if you have your visual reference, be it the model or the photo, always accessible you're not prompting your brain enough to hold on to what you're visually seeing for a longer time than necessary because you can always just flick up your eyes and there's the reference again. So we want to remove the access to the visual reference to coax your brain to have to retain what it saw for longer and longer stretches of time. So let me show you what this will look like. Now before we get into this exercise, I want to warn you, do not expect these exercise drawings to be beautiful products. Take that pressure off completely, you will throw these away. It's not about the finished drawing, it's about what's happening in here as you're going through this exercise. So the reward is not external, the reward is internal. So keep this in mind as you're going through this exercise. All right, so here's my reference that I'm gonna be working from. I chose a bunch of dog profiles. When you do this exercise, focus in on a very specific subject matter. So for me, I'm not doing all dogs and all dog bodies. I just chose dog heads. So if you want to do this with a human figure, you can do it with the entire figure, but I also highly recommend just zeroing in on legs, let's say, and having different models and different leg poses. So here I have the different dog options. Look, they're all heading in the same direction. And what I do next is I grab my timer and I am timing myself for 60 seconds. And I will narrate what I'm thinking to myself as I am watching this reference image for 60 seconds. So the kind of things I'll be saying to myself are things like, okay, very rounded cranium, super ball-like, and the cranium width to the snout length is about two to one. So the cranium is twice as big as the snout. Uh, it reminds me of a step up. I see both the far eye and the close eye. Um, the nose to lip is very straight. The lips remind me of a V. And then there's this beautiful curve going into these sagging jowls. The chin jaw area is fairly straight. And then I go from that sagging lip mouth corner over this kind of furry peak at the jaw corner to the ear. So I'm narrating all the transitions to myself. The ear is almost triangular. Oop, and here goes my timer. So now I hid the image and I'm drawing what I retained. Um, and I'm going to start very loose, just remembering there was a ball, there was a snout, the ball, the snout was two to one. I do remember there was like a step up. And if I remember, these are going to look ugly. These are not going to look good. I remember the actual snout. I remember this V from the lips, something about jowls. So I'm just kind of trying to recall all the sentences that I logged into my mind. And what you'll find is the more 
helpful the sentence is, the better the results of your drawings. So here I'm feeling out, okay, what was what else was back there on the ball? What, there was an ear and I remember something about it being triangular. So let me see what that was like. But you can tell that my memory already is starting to falter. And I'm just kind of like drawing from memory, but also from just what I think might be accurate. So it's a little bit of smoke and mirrors at this point. I do remember seeing that far eye, so I'm trying to bring that out, trying to sense where that other eye would be. And the next step that I'll do is I will bring up the reference and give myself another minute to reflect on what I've done to see the um, corrections that might improve what I have so far. So in the next 60 seconds, you really wanna stay on target. It's easy to get sucked into being ashamed that you didn't remember more. This is not about feeling ashamed. This is about learning better questions so you retain more information. So the kind of things I'm noticing right now are what's happening with the ear. That peak is quite different from what I see in the photograph. Other things I'm noticing is that it's more like a lab type of dog and not a rotty. So what is that that makes it like a Rottweiler? It's this height here should be taller from what I have so far. And that gives that lower chin jaw a different quality. So those are the areas that I'll try and improve on as I get into the next drawing session. So I'm putting away the reference and I'm drawing what I retain from here on out. So this is sped up, obviously. I wanna to get to more examples, but you can play around with how you orchestrate this. So in this example, I allow myself to look for 60 seconds, put it away, draw, look for 60 sec seconds, put it away, draw again. You can also extend the time that you look and only draw once. There are multiple ways you can arrange your time sequence and still benefit from this exercise. So in this one, I allowed myself to then look at the reference one final time, make a few adjustments while I have the reference up, and then I move on. You don't wanna get stuck on these, keep it rolling. Let's time another 60 seconds for the next dog. Okay, so I'm thinking upward, slender, rectangular shape. So upward pointing. It's not quite horizontal, upward pointing. Um, cranium to snout, the cranium is much shorter than the previous one. It might be a little bit less than the snout length. Um, the ear is leaning back, it's triangular. See the back ear, tufts, like this arc tuft on the eye socket. Big nose, angle down towards the lip. Beard covering the lip, beard coming off of the jaw and chin, neck begins underneath the eye. And the beard goes up to swoop and connect with the eyebrow eye, um, eyebrow hair. And then let me have a stab at this. So not horizontal, upward. Oh, but not quite that much. It was a very subtle upward. And the snout to cranium was something like this. The snout wasn't straight. There was a little bit of a backward slant. There was this angle from the beard tip to the eyebrow hair arc. I remember that. Do remember seeing a little bit of the other side of the eyebrow. I didn't narrate to myself whether there was a step up from the snout to the cranium. I'm assuming there was a little bit of a step up because of the eye socket, but it must have been mild. Uh, I know the ears were big and triangular with a backward lean. I know I saw the other ear and our remember noticing how that one was shorter. I know that the neck started right underneath the eye socket somewhere here and I also remember there being an angle. Something like that. And notice how I kept this really simple right now, right? Um, just lengths and like this length to this length and um, angles, like not horizontal but slightly up. Uh, angled, angled. So, what I'm keeping in my mind are 
lengths and angles and relationships, and that leads to a shape. So in this example, you see me draw a little bit more and then I pull up the reference and I make the corrections as I have the reference next to the drawing. So I could have shortened this much more than I did. Oh, I also have the ear turned the wrong way. You see how here I left this space? When in fact, I should have had the ear. Let's, so let's make a correction here. So I hope that as you're doing this, you're noticing that as you're comparing what you drew initially to what the reference looks like, that you're slipping into hyper focus. And that is really the goal of this exercise. The exercise is not about having a cool result. If you do have a cool result as the end product, awesome. But the goal is to slip into hyper focus and be an active participant when you look at your subject matter because it's that hyper focus that will cement shapes and particularities in your mind long term. So let me break down more systematically what it is exactly that I'm thinking about. So here I allow myself 90 seconds to look at the reference, then I hid the reference, and then I tried to recall what I saw. The very first aspect of your subject matter that you should pay attention to are the big major angles. How long is cranium to snout, cranium to neck, nose to lower lip, chin to neck, and what angle? So it's about the lengths and the angles. Once you've committed them to memory, then you can consider the second portion. Within those lengths and angles, what are the sub proportions? Cranium to nose, ear to jaw. So that is the proportion element to this equation, whereas these were the angles. So the surprising thing to most people is that capturing the angles and lengths correctly has about 80% of the characteristic of your subject matter contained. So this is called the largest enveloping shape. So if you look at this little dachshund, the characteristic of it is already contained in this big envelope, this big enveloping shape. And you can compare this kind of shape to this kind of shape that's from the husky type of breed. So the container is very different for this as opposed to what you saw earlier. So beginning with your big angles is really, really beneficial. So once you have your lengths and angles and you've considered the proportions within those, then you can move on to memorizing sub parts or sub shapes. So here, for example, the eyebrow hair, what kind of shape is that? The ear, what kind of shape is that? The beard to nose shape, what is that? The snout itself. So there are many, many sub parts you can tease out to then put inside of your large envelope. So as I mentioned earlier in this video, you can also do this with a figure. So I recommend you zero in on a particular body section. So in this example, I was just focusing on arm shapes. You can do this with leg shapes, but you can also do it with the entire pose. However, when you do this, you want to go in the same sequence. You look for, let's say 90 seconds, you hide your reference, and you go through your catalog of questions. What were the angles, the overall angle of the entire arm, the overall angle of the entire shoulder? How long was the shoulder segment in comparison to the arm segment? And once you have those, then you can think about the inner proportions, upper arm to lower arm to hand. And then if you have the capacity, you can layer those sub shapes on top, deltoid, ridge muscles, etc. Noticing that the underside of the arm is straight, that the top side of the arm has all the bumps. And so remembering what the sequence of the bumps are. So see how there is a hierarchy of like when to address what elements. So let me show you just one more example. So here I take in this pose for 90 seconds. I'm thinking about the big angles, the directions, the lengths, then the proportions within that. I'm drawing this in my mind's eye with my finger on the page. And then I try to bring that back to life once I'm hiding the reference image. And I'm going again, that same sequence, overall angle, 
overall length. Look how simplified everything is looking at this stage. I'm not beginning with the sub parts. I'm beginning with the overall length and direction. And once I got those down, I add the lumps and bumps and the sub portions. And then pulling that reference back up and comparing to what you have so far really brings that hyper focus back. It helps you remember, oh, that's where the bump was, not there. This is where the proportions were, not that. And like that, with this active engagement, you're bound to remember so much more the next time you try to draw from imagination. So of course, all of this is completely worthless if you never actually sit down and do the exercise. So tell me in the comments below which subject matter you're going to practice this with so I can hold you accountable. So if you're getting a sense that these are the targeted types of exercises, you really should be integrating more and more into your daily practice to get to that place where you're finally proud of your drawing skill set, then do yourself a favor and watch that free masterclass I have linked in the description below. In it, I'm outlining a step-by-step -step systematic way of going for feeling like a fraud because of your technical shortcomings to being proud because you're creating meaningful, well-crafted drawings. I promise you won't regret it. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.